That was in 1D. What about in 2D? And these concepts in 2D will also extend to 3D. Okay. This is where I could have used my notes to help me not make a mistake. But in 2D, now we have two dimensions of deformation, right? We can, we can take this, so this is our original, instead of, now, instead of having a bar, now we have a cube, and we can sort of stretch it in two directions, right? in the X and the Y. And, and we'll possibly get some deformation that looks like this. But if we want to know what our what our definition of strain is, and so we'll just we'll just in words we'll say the same thing, right? We'll say that we have this original line segment A B, right? And th this is what we'll call like a reference configuration. Right? So in the reference configuration we have this line segment A B, and then the deformed configuration we have little a and little b. Right? And so the strain in the x direction is going to be the change in AB, the magnitude of AB, minus AB over AB. Right. So I, AB, that's just, I'm, those are vectors. AB is a vector, like I could just call it V or something, right? But I'm calling it AB, just just to identify the clip. Oh, didn't affect. My, bu my button popped. <laughs> Too many beers last week. Um, all right, so this is how we're going to de define. And, you know, it's the same thing, right? It's the change in length over the original length. Our original length is AB. Now, our cubes are infinitesimally small, so this line segment is, has a length dx. Right? So in the, the big AB right, is dx. This is just dx. And so we can write this dx over dx. Or A B over D X minus one. Now the length of a vector, I mean you know, so little A B is a vector, it's this vector. What's the length of a vector? The magnitude, the magnitude of the vector. The square root of the sum of the squares, right? We've already talked about this several times. Right? So the square root of the sum of the squares are the components. Well, from our picture here, we can figure out what the components are. So in this, in the deformed configuration, so I've, I've stretched to this, and the stretch is this distance, right? The stretch is this distance. And I've also stretched it in the y direction, this distance. So that's Partial u, partial x, um, you know, it's it's the change in the x direction times dx, and the change in the w in the y the change in the y direction with respect to x dx. So that's this length and this length. So uh, if we just write down, I mean, it's it may be easier to just remember a vector is a vector is like b. My, the vector that we're talking about, a, b, is the position of b minus the position of a. So let's just write down what the vector a, b is in terms of those guys, right? And so the, the, the position of b is u, x, right? This is u, x, okay? Plus d, x, plus the change in u, or partial u part partial ux partial x dx.
So that's this whole thing is the position of B, right? Minus the position of A. The position of A is, is UX. Right? So then the UX is canceled, right? And I get this term. So this is like the A B, the component of A B X, right? Component of A B in the X direction. And so then I need to square that, right? So then A B, A B X is equal to B X plus partial. That guy, right? <coughs> yeah, ABX, sorry. Ah, yeah, yeah. So then, um, let's see, this, uh, this also, that, this was ABX, right? This is X component of AB. It just simplifies to this, this term. Right? So then let's write down the Y component of AB. This is where my notes would have helped because I could have skipped some steps here. The Y component of AB is, right, I'm just going to write down the Y position of B, right? So that's U in the Y direction plus this thing. So U in the Y plus partial UY. Partial x dx minus uy, right? So those guys cancel. And so then, then the uh, aby squared is just partial uy partial x. So then what we're looking for is the magnitude of AB, I'm sorry, the magnitude of AB is the square root of the sum of the squares, AB in the x direction squared plus AB in the y direction squared. That's equal to dx squared plus 
and then all of that to the one half power. So sorry about the this is all one equation here. So remember I have this one here. So I'm looking for this equation right here. So go back to this. So this, this thing needs to go back into that equation. So to do that, I'm going to move. So I'm going to move over here. Right, so I'm going to move, I'm going to move the, the one to the other side of the equation. So then I have. E, uh, e minus 1 times dx is equal to AB, the magnitude of AB. Everybody OK? So I just I rearranged this equation over there. Plus 1, plus 1. Then I'm going to put this over there. But okay, I'm going to put this here. But I got this square root sign, and I don't like it. I don't, I don't want to mess with that square root sign. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to square both sides of the equation. Right. So I'm going to square both sides of the equation. That's going to be equal to what's over here, okay? Without that. And at the same time, the one thing I didn't sort of say at the front I should have is that the transformation from here to here, we're going to assume that is a small deformation. This is a small deformation. And strictly, our our, defi our definition of small is going to be that sort of the, the the magnitude of the gradient of u is much, much less than 1. Right? So this is small. Okay. But the point is, because it's small, because that's our definition of small, these higher order terms are going to go away. Right? So when I, because you know, I have a small, this gradient is small, and a small number squared is going to be really small. Right? And so I'm going to ignore these higher order terms here. And when I write it over there, I'm just going to write this. Okay, so I'm just going to write that. Right. <clears throat> now I have a dx squared on both sides of the equation in every term, so those guys are going to cancel. Right. So that dx squared cancels with that one, cancels with that one. So then I'm left with ex plus 1 squared is equal to 1 plus 2 partial u partial x. Now we're getting somewhere. So if I expand the, the left-hand side, I have ex squared plus 2 ex plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 partial u partial x. And I don't know how, I'm not sure how I got through all that without making a mistake. But again, because of the definition of small, we're going to make that thing go to 0. Now cancel, 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 cancel. ex is equal to partial u partial x. So the two di the two dimensional definition of the x component of strain is identical to the one to, to the one dimensional strain. Partial u partial x. Right? Likewise, we could go through all those same arguments and come up with a similar 
for EY, it's uh, partial U, partial Y. Okay. And of course, if this was three dimensions, then we'd have also have a epsilon Z, partial U, partial Z, right? So we'll stop there. Next time, we'll talk about the shear deformations. Now we have, now we also have shear deformations, right? Epsilon XY, epsilon YZ. Okay.